Hello, how are you guys doing today? This is Brighton, and today's video is going over androgenic alopecia and how to tell if you have early symptoms or signs of it. Uh, this can be for all ages. Uh, we're going to be going over like the most aggressive cases in like teenagehood, uh, as well as you know twenties, thirties, and what to really talk to your doctor about if you think you are experiencing male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness, and if you should be going over a strong treatment, uh, a mild treatment, or you know, what should you do if you are experiencing some symptoms of uh, male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness, also known as androgenic alopecia. Uh, and really today will be just a quick run through of what you can do if you are, you know, having early first signs of androgenic alopecia. So we'll hop right on it. So the first symptom in androgenic alopecia is going to be usually hair thinning. So that's gonna be in the temporal region or in the norwood pattern here. So that's gonna be the upfront or gonna be on the back of the head where the crown is, or sometimes through the middle, depends usually for female pattern baldness. Uh, we'll start through the middle there, the middle part. Uh, but yes, hair thinning is gonna be a big one. A lot of hair is maybe gonna look more velous, less dense, uh, but sometimes uh, people won't have thinning and they'll just have recession in general, uh, where their hairline is just starting to push back or they're gonna start to have more of a bald spot in the back of their head. Uh, it really just depends on hair types. Um, but in general, typically one of those two are gonna be the first signs for male pattern baldness. Uh, and that's when you usually talk to your dermatologist or you know doctor about maybe getting on treatment. Uh, now, it depends for your age here. Now, if you are in your early teens here, you have an aggressive case of androgenic alopecia, and typically you're gonna to have to push the stronger uh, treatments here. So stronger 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. So what these drugs are, they're gonna cut off the conversion of dihydrotestosterone, which is the main hormone that causes male pattern baldness. The enzyme 5 alpha reductase is what turns testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. So that is pretty much the biggest worry here when it comes to stopping male pattern baldness and female pattern baldness as well. So typically if you are a teenager, you have an aggressive case. So stronger 5 alpha reductase inhibitors may be better for you in long term. But of course, you're still a teenager, you're an adolescence. It is not recommended to start 5-alpha reductase inhibitors in your teenagehood just because it's important to have uh, DHT present uh, in your body during this time just for secondary male characteristics. Now, once you hit adulthood and your 20s uh, and so on and so forth, dihydrotestosterone isn't nearly as important for it causes just more body hair growth, um, and large prostates even, and it can be just more of a nuisance. So sometimes um, in general, some people are genetically more prone to DHT driven side effects, like for example, male pattern baldness, uh, BPH, stuff like that, and even back hair growth, for example. It really depends. But in general, it seems that like those people who are in teenagehood may have to stick to something like minoxidil, which is a hair growth stimulant, uh, a potassium channel opener, helps grow hair on the top of the head. Oral minoxidil is a treatment as well when it comes to growing hair, but it's all over the body and there may be some side effects. Uh, it isn't hormonal, but it can have some side effects when it comes to the cardiovascular system and maybe some negligence when it comes to kidney health uh, and maybe some autoimmune uh, conditions as well. Um, but that's not for everyone. You should be speaking to your doctor about this if you want to start oral minoxidil. Now for topical minoxidil, it's usually tolerated by people a lot better, but a lot of people don't respond to it as well. Uh, some people do things like microneedling with minoxidil to help the absorption of minoxidil have more minoxyl effect, so more hair growth in general. Uh, but minoxyl isn't hormonal, so it's not really stopping hair loss, it's helping hair growth. So if you mix a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor with minoxyl, that is the best usually treatment in general. That's what's recommended the most. Thin asteroid, which inhibits around 70% systemic DHT and around 40% scalp DHT. So it works for most individuals. Typically, usually someone in their 20s, they're gonna be recommended, hey, you have a mild aggressive case of androgenic alopecia, finasteride one milligram, uh, topical minoxidil once or twice a day, 5%. Uh, while someone in their 30s, they have pretty much the average genetics for male pattern baldness or androgenic alopecia. Uh, so typically something just like one milligram of finasteride daily or even maybe a couple times a week will be good enough just to kind of halt or stop hair loss. And especially for someone in their 40s and so on and so forth, uh, leaving lower doses of finasteride would work just as well um, for someone in their 40s. Um, of course, sometimes 
You can also apply minoxidil too if you are, you know, 40 plus. Maybe just finasteride if you, you, know, you don't have an aggressive case of androgenic alopecia. Some people, especially in their early 20s and or teenagehood, uh, if they really care about keeping their hair, they'll push the envelope and maybe move on to a stronger 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, like something like dutasteride, 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride, or 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride to crush more systemic DHT and more scalp DHT. So that may work a lot more better for just in general for uh, most individuals who have aggressive cases of androgenic alopecia. Um, someone who's maybe like 19 or 20 and they really care about their hair and they just want to have the strongest dose possible, strongest treatment for hair loss to stop it. And then they compound it with minoxidil as well. There's some other treatments too, uh, maybe during teenagehood that would be you know, well tolerated, something like maybe ketoconsidal shampoo, a mild anti-androgen on the scalp that doesn't seem to become too systemic. Um, so that might work a little better too. There are anti-androgens that may be promising for some individuals topically. It's like ru 5 a one may become more systemic. There's not too much great literature on it, but you know, there are some that are better than others. So maybe something like Floridol may be a little better. It, it seems to be an anti-androgen that just stays in the scalp but we don't have that much literature on it. And it seems that finasteride and things like dutasteride are coming out with more and more literature to support their uh, efficacious uh, findings. So when it comes to how well the drug works. But yeah, typically in the 20s, it's typically gonna do something like a finasteride, dutasteride around this time, topical minoxidil or oral minoxidil as well. And if you want to go down the anti-androgen path, that's up to you, but obviously that is your decision. Uh, and doctors typically won't recommend something like that. Now for women experiencing androgenic alopecia, sometimes our doctors are gonna recommend something like spironolactone, uh, an anti-androgen, uh, 19 nor testosterone, something that's very suppressive of androgens in general, um, and even some birth controls as well and different catalogs of synthetic estrogen too. There's a whole you know, list of different things that doctors can prescribe for women when it comes to acne and of energetic alopecia. Something here. like topical minoxidil or oral minoxidil is going to work really well as well for helping density with hair, uh, just getting its thickness back. Uh, that works really well when it comes to female pattern baldness too. And five milligrams of finasteride seems to work really well. And it seems that the side effects are very, you know, very little comparatively to something like spironolactone or, you know, uh, a 19 or testosterone. There's a whole list of different side effects. While something like a five milligrams uh, finasteride and uh, minoxidil are gonna be tolerated pretty well, especially if it's topical minoxidil, that typically is gonna be recommended for women who are experiencing female pattern baldness. Um, if you are, you know, obviously if your doctor is recommending something like spironolactone or any of these other drugs for uh, female pattern baldness, please talk to them maybe about five milligrams finasteride um, there is literature on it as well as you know minoxidil as well now maybe something like a topical anti androgen too might be a little better just because testosterone still plays an important role in women too it's not just males for aggressive cases of androgenic alopecia sometimes it will even start on the sides of the scalp as well not all hairs are safe when it comes to uh, aggressive cases of androgenic alopecia it is called retrograde alopecia where it's on the side of the scalp as well so even people who have extreme uh, diffuse thinning or extreme androgenic alopecia genetics, they even getting a hair transplant may not be enough for them to save from the Norwood Reaper, we can call it. <laughs> so in general, people who get hair transplants, typically they are known as these are the safe hairs and then they can transplant them onto the areas they want covered. But if they have aggressive androgenic alopecia, these hairs may be affected as well. But most individuals, uh, if you are using treatment like one milligram of finasteride, it will work really well um, for most people with hair transplants. It's only for some cases of extreme androgenic alopecia with retrograde alopecia where hair transplants uh, may not work as well. But most people, hair transplants will last forever. Just because you are losing hair doesn't mean you are experiencing androgenic alopecia for everyone sheds. And do not panic if you're losing hair, you know, when in the shower or you're noticing more hair fall. Uh, it is normal, everyone sheds hair, but if you are maybe noticing maybe more hair from the top of your head is shedding in the shower, for example, or you're shedding an abnormal amount of hair, um, of course, it could be something like telogen effluvium, even though it's rare, uh, but that's usually a, a clump of hair from a certain area part of your head from PTSD or a very traumatic uh, experiences. Um, that is temporary shedding from a, you know, 
a certain area of the head, while something like androgenic alopecia is going to be symmetrical, you know, through this pattern right here, it's not going to be completely symmetrical, but it goes at the pattern of your temples and on the crown of your head or down the line where it thins out for female pattern baldness. Um, so if you are noticing maybe more thinning of the hair or in general at the top of your head and just more hair fall than normal when it comes to just the top of your head compared to the sides or your hairs are prematurely like falling out and they're shorter than other hairs, that might be a sign that the telogen phase is premature or the hair is just going through the cycles quick just due to the exposure to dihydrotestosterone. A quick rundown of androgenic alopecia and any symptoms that you may have for early signs of hair loss. Well, androgenic alopecia is the most common form of hair loss. It is important to, you know, look into just to catch it early because if it's too late, it's really hard to gain back ground and uh, it is important to look into if you want to keep your hair. So yeah, uh, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wrap this up for today. I think that is all I'm gonna cover. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like. Um, and if you guys disagree with me about anything or want to add anything, uh, feel free to comment down below as well. So yeah, you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Bye.